Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Time to start the conversation about season eight. So we could do this for like an hour long. So this is gonna be top 10 and then we can pick bonus videos for other really important stuff like all the Aegon backstory, why John is named Aegon instead of Jaehaerys. There'll be a lot of stuff to get through and I will still be doing the Game of Thrones giveaway week to week during the off season, however long it takes to get to season eight. But let's actually start with that. So number 10, they're starting to shoot season eight, like actually film episodes with the actors in October. That doesn't 100% confirm that they're going to finish everything by next year and get it out by the summer, but it's a strong possibility. There was a big question earlier this year about how long it was going to take them to write the scripts. There's only six episodes. It sounds like they'll all be longer than an hour, maybe not quite as long as this finale, but maybe close to it. Feature length is usually something you use to describe something that's longer than an hour. So I'm expecting all the episodes to be at least longer than an hour, but like episode four this season was one of the best episodes of the season was shorter than 50 minutes. So episode length isn't necessarily an indicator of episode quality. But starting with like actual Night King stuff, starting from the end of the episode. So he makes it south of the wall. Really what is probably going to do is just patrol the north and grab everybody that he can. What's the first big thing here south of the wall? The last hearth. So he's probably going to sweep over most of these minor houses like Deepwood Mott, the car hold. But I think the deeper meaning is that you get a form of a redemption for these former trader houses like you have Alice Karstark. She and all her people, the Umbers, they might wind up dying. But the Night King is basically just going to snake his way south as he gets to Winterfell. Obviously Winterfell is going to be one of the big huge battles of the season. Probably early on by the middle of the season at least. It depends on how much time passes between episodes. But for those of you asking about Tormund and Beric, yes, I believe they made it down the wall. They just didn't show you them escaping. But if you haven't seen the body, that means that they're probably still alive. So don't worry about them. They either made it into the bay and they're sailing south or they made it to the last hearth and that's where they'll pop up next. But like Tormund's too amazing to get rid of in an off-screen moment. So I think that all the people that died in the wall coming down are just red shirts. But number nine, in service of really great moments with Tyrion and Cersei, the episodes will be a nice mixture of the Game of Thrones part of Game of Thrones, which is talking in rooms in big action set pieces. So they'll be able to have an equal balance of both. But I still think they'll try to do at least one big hard home style episode where you're just consumed with a single plot line in a really big action set piece that also sort of weaves in a little bit of character stuff. Hard Home is still one of the best, if not the best, big action set piece that the TV show has ever done, if not best episode outright. So I'm going to cross my fingers that they're able to get some of their A-list directors because there were a couple directors that they were not able to bring back this season for scheduling reasons. So hopefully they can bring back the best of the best when it comes to making the episodes. But a lot of those really awesome character moments are just predicated on the odd pairings of people that you don't normally see together, like the Hound and Brienne. So I'm hoping for more of that. Brienne can go anywhere with his mind, and Samwell is a character that just brings so much comedy with him, but he has all this knowledge from the Citadel too. So together, they represent basically everything that we need to know. They're a giant exposition bomb waiting to go off. And it just depends on how much they weave that in. Like they kept Bran off screen a lot this season because he's this big Achilles heel for the storytelling because he could have revealed everything in the first episode. Like, oh, Jon's name is Aegon. He's secretly the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna. He's the heir to the Iron Throne. So a lot of Bran's storyline is in revealing information, but he's also critical to defeating the Night King. So I think you'll slowly see his power levels ramp up and Samuel will just be there to serve as a really good comedy tool because Bran is kind of a piece of wood right now, the way he acts. He's like a human turnip. Samwell's the perfect character to react to all that craziness. But number eight, speaking of really interesting pairings and huge reunions, there's still a couple big ones left to happen. There's Jon and Arya, there's Gendry and Arya, and I'd say ghost, but there's a solid chance that we'll never see him again on the TV show. I'm going to cross my fingers on that one. But like Daenerys hasn't met any of the Lords of the North. Jon Royce was hardcore anti-Targaryen and he's now the de facto leader of the Vale until the sweet Robin either raises up or Sansa marries him and gains de facto control over the entire North. As far as paying those reunions off though, I think that everybody's slowly going to converge around the same time. John and Daenerys are sailing for White Harbor right here. After that, if they don't go directly back to Dragonstone to monitor sort of the mining of all the dragonglass, they'll probably go to Winterfell because that's where one of the big battles happens. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get that Arya Gendry, Arya, John reunion till midway through the season, because I don't think the Night King is going to make it to Winterfell immediately. Like I said, you know, middle of the season at least. I'll try to explain how I think the timing of the final battle and the War for the Dawn in Dream of Spring is going to work into the end of the series, because I don't think they're going to wait to the final moment of the final episode to actually kill the Night King. It'll probably happen much earlier than that. But number seven, Tyrion. Lots of Tyrion questions at the end of the episode. That weird look on his face as he saw that Jon was starting to get it on with Daenerys. I think he's going to continue to be frustrated by the decisions that Daenerys makes and she won't listen to him as much as she should. And now that Jon's part of that equation and Tyrion senses that they're growing really close and it's starting to get really crazy, he's probably worried about it blowing up in their face. But he doesn't know anything about the incest bomb. He doesn't know about secret Targaryens. He's probably just worried about the alliance disintegrating because of some bad decision they make. Like it might end badly because they're making things so complicated with their relationship. So that's probably what this look is all about. There are a lot of people that are pointing to the original George R. R. Martin outline and they think there might be some Tyrion betrayal going on because of Cersei and his family. Like he might be valuing his family over what's going on with Daenerys. And I don't think that's the case because Jaime is slowly coming to the north, so Tyrion's going to learn about that shortly. So his family is coming to the north. I think their relationship with Cersei will continue to be complicated, but I don't think that he's going to turn on Daenerys. So I wouldn't read too much into this look. I think it's just meant to be ominous because the look is happening while Bran is narrating Jon's true identity. So I think it's just the complication that he's worried about. But number six, speaking of Cersei and her pregnancy, so I do believe that she's pregnant, but I think that the baby's not going to come to term and she will actually be left with no one. Like that was what Jamie was trying to tell her. It's only the two of us. There's no one else because Tyrion's left them. So he says, you will actually be left alone if I leave. And then, you know, it comes to a head and he finally leaves. So I think the idea is that in season eight, she will be left with nothing and she'll be drowning in her tears, Valon Carr style. And you'll actually see the fulfillment of a Cersei with unlimited money, but no conscience and no regard for anyone else. One of my favorite Cersei quotes in the episode was when she was having it out with Jamie before he left. And she says, that she doesn't care about making the world a better place. It's probably the most honest thing she said in the last couple of episodes, if not the last couple of seasons. So while the Night King is the ultimate threat, Night King plus Viserion equals Westeros is screwed, Cersei will rise to be the ultimate human villain of the series. But number five, talking about Euron, some of this other plotline stuff, Euron makes it back with the Golden Company. They use the Iron Bank's money to fortify their fleet, all their defenses in King's Landing. But the whole idea at the end of the series, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Cersei is now kind of the lone wolf, so I don't think it's going to do them any good. But I don't think that the Army of the Dead or the Night King is going to kill Cersei or Euron. Because number four, I am almost 100% certain that Book Jamie is the Valon Carr. But the TV show might bend that a little bit. There are a couple different versions of the fulfillment of the Valon Carr that I hope the TV show decides to go with. Like they tend to go with metaphors over making things very literal. So like the little one or the baby might wind up being her ultimate death. That'd be a perfect metaphor. So like Jamie, the little brother, winds up being the fulfillment of the Valon Carr through the baby that he put in her who is also the little brother. But obviously, I think that Theon's going to be the one to kill Euron. Euron is more of a comedy villain at this point. He's kind of like a meme, like a really funny pirate that just comes out and says funny stuff and then goes off screen. But the only thing that I'm going to be a real stickler about is I'm going to be really upset if Jaime doesn't wind up getting to die in Brienne's arms. He's definitely going to die. He already narrated his death. I want to die in the arms of someone I love. So I want them to pay that off. But I also want Cersei's death to be a direct result of something that Jaime does. Because I feel like they either have to meet their end together because their storylines have been so intertwined. Their lives are so tied together. But again, just really holding out for some sort of Brienne moment. Like Jamie finally listens to her. They get like a very brief moment of happiness together. Then he dies in her arms. But number three, the brand flashbacks will continue, but mostly in service of character development over plot forwarding. So like the Rhaegar Lyanna flashback was all about the reveal of Jon Snow's true origin, his identity. The reason they did that is because it's going to massively complicate the alliance and it's going to be a seismic shift for his character when he learns about it. The Littlefinger flashbacks that Bran had, because he sort of narrates it, you don't actually go back to the moment in King's Landing, you just hear him say it out loud, were all about Sansa's character development. And there's been this thing about the last couple of seasons, them doing a flashback in the final episode to Rhaegar, Lyanna, Robert's Rebellion stuff. 
So if they're going to continue that, it would make sense that they end on Rhaegar dying at the Trident. But you guys can let me know which other Robert's Rebellion flashbacks you would want. But that just feels like the next biggest one. But speaking of character development, number two, the big incest bomb will probably go off relatively early in the season, not right away, maybe the very end of episode one or sometime during episode two, just enough time for it to complicate most of season seven. Like they just have to deal with their feelings for each other. And I definitely think there's a lot of potential for Daenerys baby. So just as their relationship reaches its metaphorical and literal climax, you can make all the boat sex jokes that you want. Bran drops the bomb on them. They have to deal with that while they deal with the army of the dead. And it winds up being sort of a version of the Sansa John conflict, the Arya Sansa conflict at Winterfell, where there's just a lot of interpersonal drama. And of course, we have to talk about Jon Snow becoming a dragon rider. So I think it's pretty obvious that if he's going to ride a dragon, it's going to be the one named for his father. It's the only other one that's available at this point. So Jon riding Rhaegal at some point, it's such a huge deal that they would probably try to make a big special thing of it the way they turned him meeting Drogon for the first time into a big thing. Like that was a heavy, heavy scene. Lots of mythology going on there. They would probably treat him riding Rhaegal in the same way. Like how to train your Game of Thrones dragon style. Like them sharing that special bond that Daenerys shares with Drogon. So it'll be interesting to see how they play with that. I know a lot of people will just be upset that Ghost isn't around because he already has that bond with Ghost. But Jon riding Rhaegal is just some next level shit. So I can't wait to see that happen. But I think if there's going to be actual Daenerys pregnancy, it'll be revealed later in the season and it'll be more Dream of Spring style. Like it'll be one of the big things that brings them back together and crystallizes their relationship. Because what better marker of family is there than a baby? That's what Cersei's been harping about all season long. That's all she cares about, her family. She keeps rubbing her belly as she says that. The lone wolf dies, the pack survives. Eventually, you know, this Northern Alliance, Jon Daenerys will come together, but there will be some of that drama that you saw earlier in the season up in Winterfell. Like it might get a little nuts, but remember the big goal here is the Night King, the army of the dead. So I think we know where it's all headed, but pending, you know, giant time jump between the last couple of episodes, I don't think we'll actually see any baby born on the TV show. I think maybe just the idea that the baby is going to be born at some point, a dream of spring. So the actual number one, like I said, the actual long night falls on most of Westeros. That was what the implication was, is like the winter storm was pushing south of the wall. Like that black, thick winter storm is going to cover most of the north in the early episodes. And like down in King's Landing, it's just started to snow. It actually looked really beautiful in the episode. But remember how thick the storm was when they cut back up to Winterfell before the end of the episode? That level of winter will probably fall on King's Landing. Like you'll actually see snow drifts at the Red Keep and there'll be some version of this Daenerys vision. But, you know, remains to be seen whether or not they literally blow up King's Landing. So we could talk about this for another hour, but let me know, what are your biggest predictions for the final season? And when do you think the big incest bomb is going to go off? Like when will John and Daenerys actually learn the truth of the matter? That's going to be really exciting to watch that go off in their faces. But what will happen next is, is there'll be a couple of mythology bonus videos this week. I'll also be doing a Q&A tomorrow. So just leave all your questions you want me to include in that in the comments below. But as for actual bonus videos, I'll just pick stuff based on what you guys want to talk about most. So obviously we have John Daenerys incest bomb. We have the major battles of the North to talk about. We have more Rhaegar flashbacks. Hopefully they'll do a Trident flashback next season. So we can talk about that later this week. But I'll say congratulations to the latest giveaway winner, Mark Campbell. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. You can click here for my finale video again. And you can click here to learn all about Daenerys' possible pregnancy and the prophecy behind that. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.